An effective UX case study is not just a string of nice flows, visuals, and prototypes. You have to set the context for the project, and in order to do that, you have to do a little bit of writing. Many designers have some self-doubt when it comes to writing, so today I'm going to walk you through how I outline my case study, what I include, and exactly what I've written so you can learn from a real example. But first, if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Maddie. I am a product designer and currently a creative resident at Adobe, and here on YouTube I make videos about design and productivity and making a living as a creative. So if you're into those things, please hit subscribe and look out for new videos from me every single week. And without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, quick disclaimer, this is just how I approach this. Many designers might have a completely different approach and I think it's best to learn from a bunch of different designers and mentors and things like that and not just follow kind of the first thing that you hear. So take all this with a grain of salt, but that being said, I do hope that this is helpful. Okay, so the first thing I'll do when I'm ready to write my outline for my case study is I will open up a new Google Doc and I will start with these headings that I have in blue. So let's go through those first. I have the introduction, the background, the research, the insights from that research. So you can lump those together if you want. The concept, and the concept is sort of like the introduction to the concept, and then design, which is where I actually show the key flows, testing, a summary, which is kind of the end, and then if I want, I'll include a future roadmap if there are features that I might want to include later on or just ideas that didn't really make um, the cut for the first uh, round. So let's go through these in a bit more detail. Um, some of them are easy and some of them I'll give you a few pointers for if you haven't written them before. So first we have the title, so I'll just title the project and this will just help me then figure out um, you know, kind of what I want on that header of my case study to obviously title the project. Then I'll outline my role, the timeline, and then the problem statement. And the problem statement should always be really, really early up in your case study. So that's why I put it in the introduction. I talk about this in more detail in my Skillshare class, which I will have linked below. But when you're writing your problem statement, I always like to first set some context about why this problem is important when, then add in, like introduce who is having the problem, um, what they want and what is standing in their way. And so that's kind of a good way to think about structuring your problem statement. Okay, then moving into the background, first I will state my hypothesis. So based on that problem statement, what do I think is going to solve that problem? That is how I will approach this sentence here. Then the why, so I'll go into a little bit more detail here. Um, you know, you can or don't have to include this. It really depends on your case study, but for mine, I like to be pretty detailed. So I included a little bit more about why this is important right now. Then, this is really important, I outlined the business opportunities. So if you're writing a case study that is like mine, hypothetical and more visionary, like this is just something I'm coming up with to um, sort of get out into the world and it's something I would love to eventually you know, build, but it's not necessarily for a client, then business opportunities are the way to go and this is how I set these up. I just have a little bit of an intro as to, um, you know, how this could be helpful for a business, what types of businesses would benefit from, um, you know, creating an app like this or integrating um, a product like this. And then I'll break it down into something that is a little bit more bulleted. And this is something that I'm going to later turn into a visual. So that this, this whole um, outline you'll see whenever I show you the final case study, which also will be linked below, that it's not gonna look this text heavy because a lot of these things, I'm really making an effort to um, write them in a way where I can then turn them into visuals. However, if you're doing a case study for a real client project, then instead of business opportunities, you wanna title this business goals and talk about what the actual goals of the business you were working for um, were. And so then later on, you'll be able to measure the results and actually show that you were successful in um, meeting 
hitting their goals. So that's how you would wanna change this if it were a real client project. Okay, moving on to research. What I have here are first my survey results. So within this research section, I'm first talking about what type of research I did, and then I'm going into the insights in the next section, like the big, big takeaways. So the survey results are more quantitative than qualitative. And so these are things, again, that I may be able to turn into visuals using graphs or charts or things like that, or even just large um, percentages to make it just, you know, stand out a bit more. So I, you know, just kind of jotted down some survey results that I think might be helpful to have in the case study. And when I'm designing it, I can decide what's really important and what maybe I can leave out. Then I talk about the interviews, who I interviewed and what questions I asked. And I just bullet point these things. And again, when I'm designing this, I'll go back and see how I wanna organize this information visually. In terms of the insights, again, this is the more qualitative um, results of my research. So I just bullet point my biggest learnings, really. Um, and I like to keep them kind of short and concise, no more than one line, usually. And then I'll add in some quotes. So we'll see if I end up including this on the actual case study, but I think it is really good to write down some of your favorite quotes that really kind of prove your hypothesis or just kind of represent your main learnings. And then I just have a note for myself here that this is where I'm gonna insert my empathy map. So since I did that visually, I don't need to write it all out, but I will paste that into the case study later. Next, we have the concept, and this is sort of an introduction to the, um, you know, final deliverables. So basically, I look at what the touch points are. So based on all of my research, what things do need to be designed and what puzzle pieces need to fit together for this solution to come to life. And for this specific one, it was the mobile app and the scanner that attaches to someone's smartphone. And then I will also add in here the information architecture, the sketches and the wireframes. And again, these are things that are all visuals. So I'm just making note of them here almost as bullet points to remind myself to then go in and add those in. Next, we actually are getting into the fun part, which is the design. So what I'm doing here is I'm really just thinking about the key moments and flows and use cases, and I'm bullet pointing them out so that then I can go back into my file and I can choose, you know, which flows I'm going to be including and actually like record them in Adobe XD um, and use them inside of the case study. So that's what I'm doing here. I find that it's easier to sort of separate myself from the project and think about from someone's point of view who doesn't, who didn't design this, what would be important to show to really um, kind of drive these key learnings home. So I chose the first time user experience. Um, and I also just have notes here about what I might put off to the side um, of these um, flows, these like, I guess, animations, animated prototypes. I like to have like a couple bullet points off to the side that set the context. So for use, uh, first time user experience, I've written down uh, learn by doing um, and enable push notifications. The next use case is in the grocery store. A user would be deciding if they're going to buy the product or not, the, the piece of produce or not. And so these are sort of the notes off to the side that I have. Um, next use case is at home. Should I use it today? When should I use it? Next use case is planning ahead. And finally, reminders so that I can show off the push notifications in widgets that I designed as part of this solution. And as part of design, I also sometimes like to show the colors, typography, illustrations, icon styles, and things like that. So that's really just a note for me to show that visually. Next is testing. And for this specific project, I didn't do a testing phase um, for various reasons, which I won't get into, but I just wanted to outline it here because it is really important. And in most projects that I outline, I do testing and then I do include it in that um, uh, case study. So what you would do is talk about what you tested and maybe list out the different scenarios. And then the most important thing is the key learnings. 
And finally, what you can do to really sum this up is talk about the deliverables that were included, as well as some of the different categories of value that the product provides. So for me, I chose health, food waste, and knowledge. Those are all areas in which this product can provide value to um, the user. And next, I just have a section with future roadmap. So I can't remember if I included this in the actual case study, but this is where I just keep track of things that I do want to like keep testing and um, iterating on and potential features that I wanna add in, potential um, future use cases. And so I've just bulleted those here. And if I do wanna outline one or two really promising ones and add some visuals for it, then I will just add that to the end of my case study there. So that's kind of how I approach writing the written copy for my case studies and outlining the entire structure. I really hope that was helpful. If you want to look at the case study in more detail, it is linked below. Also, if you like this video, you'll probably like the other two videos that I've made where I talk about case studies. In those videos, I actually show you how I go about designing them in Adobe XD. So feel free to check those out, linked in the description below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!